yeah so let's uh, let's just review what we were doing that we've looked at minor uh, watershed structures and we've been looking at uh, one big uh, structure two big structures kt wares and urban uh, check dam yeah okay so uh, so uh, basically these are un unlike you know area treatment or drain line treatment these involve some amount of uh, fair amount of engineering and an important here is reservoir which actually you know uh, impounds a lot of water which is outside the river. So we had looked at how to design it. So essentially what it involves is identifying a particular contour right and on that contour you know building a, a structure which will modify that contour and so you know that contour is what will be the, uh, the you know the, the water which will be impounded. Right. So, for example, over here, so we if we identify as 100 as being the contour, then we have to make sure that the contour closes onto itself. So, that will mean introducing a main dam here and some allied you know uh, structures here. So, that the modified contour becomes 100 from here to here and so on. <clears throat> and then uh, the excess water has to be taken out which is through the spinway which is on either one of the sides. And the key wall here actually protects the main earthen dam from the spillway. <clears throat> Right then, we had seen how what is the life cycle. So it has it has to go through a process of you know demand for the for the structure. Then a cost benefit analysis. You know what what is the cost incurred in its construction and what are the benefits. The cost will also be you know land impounded or land you know uh, uh, land what's it called um, in, in impounded acquisition, forest land storage care and so on. So these are various cost benefit analysis and then we enter into a more detailed uh, <coughs> sort of analysis which is here are the contour lines and here is exactly the you know the alignment of the dam and therefore the, the water impounded one can calculate <coughs> right. And then we went into uh, <coughs> how to actually calculate the storage based on different uh, contour line and then, then we basic the design principles we reviewed that there are two things one is a you know one is the shear or the translational stability and the second one is the rotational stability right. So for the translational stability we need to make sure that the dam is actually embedded uh, in the in the area. So for that uh, we have to take some steps and for uh, rotational stability you know we have to widen the base so that you know the net weight of the dam itself you know has a as a you know whatever clockwise motion while the you know the, the toppling moment is an anti clockwise motion because of the water. So the weight of the dam actually compensates for the toppling. <coughs> so here are the you know basic uh, structure here is our dam you know assuming a rectangular here. Here is the water which is impounded. So there is a <coughs> so this is the, the sliding you know friction the sliding analysis. So there is a normal reaction there is a friction and there is a weight of the water which is pushing it. And while in the toppling, you know, one can say that we are toppling about this point, right? Then what is the, you know, the clockwise movement and the anti-clockwise movement? And then there has to be, you know, peak rainfall analysis. How, how, what is the, what sort of uh, two types of analysis for rainfall? One thing is that when will it fill? You know, for example, in very low rainfall areas, if you build a structure. You know, one should make sure that it actually fills up every third year or every second year or so. And the second type of analysis is that when it overflows, you know, the spillway has to be designed so that the the spillway can uh, take. So the sporadic rainfall, peak event rainfall, it should be clear that the spillway can handle the peak event rainfall. Correct. Uh, so these were the two structures, and then we saw that the the pinning of the dam is through the core. So the core is a uh, is a very poor conductor, which is a sheet of you know poor conductor which is inserted into uh, into the soil, into the hard rock, and through something called the cutoff trench, right? And this is called the core, and <coughs> and the cutoff trench actually the core of is a is basically like a sheet of uh, clay material which is inserted. So there is this sheet, and then it is supported by uh, murum or um, good poro you know so uh, casing material <coughs> and then we saw that uh, the head actually the head if i look at the water table on the left side which is which is the upstream side this is the water table and then it comes here 
and it drops rapidly and then uh, why does it drop rapidly because of poor conductivity. So, for the same amount of flow which is flowing from so after all there is conservation right. So, there is whatever is the seepage must flow from here to here correct. So, over here it is high conductivity material so, the, so there is this slope while here it is low conductivity material. So, therefore, the slope is much higher <coughs> right. So, as a result what happens is that on the right side much of the dam is actually dry right and whatever little seepage is there it comes out from the drains here right. So, that keeps the uh, the dam as dry as possible right. So, that the friction and the sliding and so on the friction is maintained and the slurry or sliding of the dam does not happen ok. <coughs> so, then uh, here is the cross section. So, uh, so this is 1 is to the downside uh, sorry 1 is to 2.5 on the upside 1 is to 2 on the downside and here is the rock toe the rock toe is. Uh, so, if you see what is the height is roughly 1 meter you know 1 to 2 meter so it is about this high ok. It is a it is a long you know long structure like a gabion right. So, like a gabion long structure of rocks you know at the seat of the dam. So, this so this is the downstream side so it is a toe like a toe hold for the dam so that if it is toppling you know it is it will topple at that point and that provides a lot of you know friction for the shear right. So, this this rock toe actually you know these are the drains and this rock toe is actually embedded about 1 foot below the <coughs> below the ground. So, it is 1 foot below the ground right. So, the you know trench dug about 1 foot deep and the rock toe itself is about 2 or 3 meters high, 2 or 3 feet high 1 meter high. So, it is half in half out and it provides the uh, the support for the whole dam. So, you see also here so this is the rock toe it, it, it has an angle here. So, again you see that the rock toe provides a back you know for the you know the back push uh, from the uh, from the structure uh, from the earth right. So, then um, this is the cross section. So, we I think we stopped here last time right. So, the cross section so you see this is the cross section viewed from the upstream side. So, here are three important levels. So, this is the 93 is the bottom most point in the in the stream and FSL is full storage level ok. So, uh, the full storage level is 99 and this is the waste wear bar. So, the spillway and yeah the waste wear bar this is a spillway which is 60 and 70. So, it is a 10 meter spillway correct 10 to 11. So, what is it 11 meter 12 meter spillway right. So, by the way the z direction scale is much different from the x and y direction scale. So, by the way this is called chainage ok. So, so essentially olden times there used to be a chain which was taken across the cross section and various things were marked on the chain. So, that is the reason why it is called chainage. So, the chainage began from the left. So, this is the <coughs> chainage. So, this is the top bund level right. Top bund level is to what height is the is the actual structure right. So, the full storage is 99 and the top bund level is 101.3. So, 2.3 <coughs> right and this is the high flood you know high flood level. What is HFL? High flood level. What is the difference between FSL and HFL? which is stored. So, what is how do you compute HFL? What is the meaning of it? Why is FHL needed? Right, it is. So, what determines HFL? So, how do you determine HFL? Highest rainfall data per say in an hour or 2 hours what is the number of the highest rainfall data. So, you know how much water is going to come crashing into the dam right into the reservoir and that much water must be going out of the reservoir and therefore, so if I want to reduce the HFL what should I do? If I want to reduce for a structure if I want to reduce the HFL what should I do? Increase the that is not going to work you see in monsoon for example. So, remember that if I look at peak rainfall that peak rainfall will happen when the dam is already full. So, assume that the dam is al already full. So, the peak rainfall is above 
you know what the reservoir capacity is right. So, after the dam is full and there is peak rainfall all of that is going to go right go out. So, the H right the HFL really depends on the peak rainfall after the dam is full correct. So, what determines the HFL? Length of spillway. The obvious thing is that the length of spillway determines the HFL right. So, larger the, the spillway the smaller will be the FHL yeah, the <coughs> is that clear HFL right. So, larger the spillway the larger will be the HF uh, the smaller will be the HFL. But note that the larger is the, the spillway you will have to cut a lot of material from here you know the side of the hill has to be cut right to create that spillway. So, it has an expense on the other hand you know the you know larger the you know the lower the lar higher the HFL the higher has to be the TBL and after all you want to protect the dam. So, HFL and higher you know a couple of meters above the HFL is the TBL right. So, by the way so what is the difference here? So, the key wall you know there is a wall here called the key wall that protects the dam right that protects the dam from the flow of water over here that key wall design is based on the HFL right. So, one should expect that the key there is we will show the did we see the key wall yeah this is the key wall right. So, in this key wall you know this height this height over here is the HFL right on the upstream side you do not see it, but this height is the HFL. So, once you know if the water level increases above this height it is going to spill onto the dam. Is that clear? So, the HFL, so the key wall actually you know extends up to the HFL, you know the height of the key wall is up to the HFL so that it protects the structure of the dam. <coughs> is that clear? So, in a peak event, you should you know assume that this is the down, you can sit, you know, one should sit here and see whether the water actually reaches the, the height of the key wall. So, if it spills into the key wall, you know, all this is you know it is all in danger. Mm, yeah, so we saw this is the structure. So, by the way this is the sloping side. So, if I am going down the slope was on this side and that is why we created the waste layer on the right. Why? Because if we had created the waste layer here we would have to excavate a lot of material right. So, the key wall was on the left simply because we had to uh, we wanted to keep this uh, keep the ex excavation minimum. So, that explains everything. So, this is the so, uh, uh, this is basic structure this is the flow uh, the stream yeah. <coughs> so, uh, is the thickness of water. So, the HFL minus the full storage level is the thickness of water you know which will flow over the spillway. So, that thickness of water we can judge. So, so if this is the horizontal bar this is the thickness of water right. So, there is a nice velocity profile one can you know given this much thickness of water and the length of the spillway how much water will overflow. So, that is given by some empirical relations. So, 1.6 into L h raised to 3 by 2 or something like that. And so, in Goodwin-Wadi for example, the catchment was roughly 1.1 square meter, peak rainfall was 15 uh, meter per <coughs> 50 meter per hour gives q equal to 15.3 cubic meter per second and h was 0 0.8 and L was 15 meters gave us q equal to 70. In fact, uh, so we in fact extended uh, this L was the length of the A, it was actually 12 meters and we extended to 15 you know simply because of this calculation <coughs> right and the 50 mm per hour is now routinely we are we are routinely seeing 50 mm per hour. <coughs> so, this peak rainfall gives you Q and then you know so you have to design H and L accordingly. So, that you know this this particular you know flow is relationship is maintained. <coughs> L length of the spillway okay. So, uh, yeah so this is the so all of this is in meter and this is in cubic meter per second. <coughs> Any question? So, we now know how uh, the profile you know <coughs> so how the whole thing is you know the basic design attributes of the of, <coughs> of the structure. <coughs> Any question? Any question? Okay. <coughs> so, then we uh, so, essentially these are the construction. So, you have to do uh, measurement and marking, marking of the seat. So, how we saw last time how we compute the seat. So, you have you draw a line right this is the 100 meter the line at, at which the dam will be 
and then you have the slope you know 1 is to 2 and 1 is to 2.5. So, start go moving down the dam and find out where it intersects the terrain right. So, that will be a boat shaped you know you know boat like structure and that is the seat of the dam. So, you have to clean the uh, seat of the dam completely so that there is no organic matter in the seat right because that will tend to grow and do some other things. So, that is clean and on the right side this is the upstream side on the right on the downstream side the the you know the rock toe is is created uh, along the line the cutoff trench is dug and then the construction begins. So, by the way so, so first of all seat of the dam rock toe and the drains then the COT so foundation the inspection of the strata. You know, so, if you once you dig the cutoff trench you may see some fractures you have to seal those fractures <coughs> and then the filling and rolling. So, there are two so by the way this is exactly done like 3D printing right. So, you have the cutoff trench. So, you start building it you know half one foot at a time. So, you start with the C. So, you first of all start filling up the the COT and while you are filling it up it has to be you know ro road roll a small roller has to actually make it compact. <coughs> so, you build it up one layer at a time. So, in the COT part you bring uh, you know the the, uh, the clay soil in the other part normal soil roller put another get dumpers put the soil roll put soil roll and so on water it roll it and so on. And then uh, filling and rolling so watering compaction checking soil conductivity on the field because every dumper of soil which goes into the uh, into the seat or, or into the core has to be inspected that it is of the correct conductivity. So, uh, we check that and then the key wall and masonry structure has to be done and then pitching and lining up. So, by the way I, I think that you should look at the web page you know in on my on my web page there is a link check dams in Karzat Taluka you can have a look at that project manage that project web page how it was actually done. So, uh, this is how it is done. So, this is this took roughly 64 uh, 6 months 24 lakhs. So, these are the <coughs> right. So, this is the year and by the way uh, this is a very popular the earthen dam is still very popular in Maharashtra and this is one this is I think the Neera Devgar earthen dam. So, again you see it is a huge structure and probably here is the spillway on this side ok. This is a spillway and <coughs> So, this is yeah, must be about 20 30 meters in height and notice the pitching right and these are the reserve, this is the main reservoir and this is the full structure of the dam <coughs> right. Then this is in near uh, Kubi which is actually I am uh, in Marche's area. So, if you have been to Harish Chandragarh you will probably notice this Kubi uh, structure. So, this is another this is the Kubi burn and this is the uh, Pimpalgaon reservoir and this is uh, Kalu which flows down into Kokan. <coughs> so, again this is a earthen dam. Uh, so, this is actually the dam you can see the pitching over here and all of this is uh, grown on top of the dam after pitching <coughs> and this is the reservoir on the left <coughs> ok. Any question? <coughs> so, these are earthen uh, earthen ways of course, there are. Uh, <coughs> so, here we come to uh, after you know after we have built this we come to the main salient features. So, this is the so salient feature for example, now we will under we have seen this before right. So, we have seen this. So, catchment area you know comparing catchment now we will understand all of these catchment area is what is it used for amount of water. So, here for example, average annual rainfall 75 percent dependable yield we now know what it means right. So, 75 percent of the years you know catchment area into rainfall will exceed the reservoir capacity correct. <coughs> so, let us understand each of these. So, this is of course, uh, state district village Musai catchment area into average rainfall or catchment area into rainfall that is 75 percent of the time should exceed the the gross storage. So, gross storage 134 million cubic feet 75 percent dependable to 44. So, more than 3 you know <coughs> Three fourths of the year, you should expect the dam to be full. Okay, then uh, gross storage is uh, this is one thirty four. This is the storage. Then dead storage is what? So there is an exit. You know, there's a gate. So the 
the lowest part which is not accessible. So, that is called the dead storage. So, by the way, all of these have actually gates. So, we have seen in our you know Konambe also there was a gate right at the in the middle. So, when we open the gate, you know you can drain the reservoir. So, the water which is not available is called the dead storage and that dead storage is uh, uh, 5.75. So, the live storage is of course, dead storage minus live storage which is 1, 128.51. <coughs> so, gross annual utilization 134 uh, million cubic feet. Why is this? So, 134.26 which is the same as this, right. So, by the way, many times if you look at Konambe itself, the, the amount of discharge, so or you look at Kadwa canal which we crossed. If you look at the discharge, it will exceed the reservoir capacity. Why? If you look at the canal discharge, it will exceed the reservoir capacity. Why is that? Huh? Correct, because there is water flowing into the reservoir at all times. Right? The, is that clear? So, there may be a kharif rotation of you know 50, uh, <coughs> 50, uh, 50,000 cubic meters right but there is water coming into the reservoir you know till october november from the various streams right so that so it is really working like a buffer so you may discharge the capacitor and recharge it right while while it is cold so uh, so in, in in that sense the utilization may be much more than the actual storage of the reservoir so then reservation so annual gross then top of the dam level 103 HFL 101.5, FRL full reservoir level is 100. So, what is the freeboard or the you know the that is called the freeboard 1.5 meter. So, thickness of water which will go over the uh, uh, spillway right. A maximum height of dam 89, what is this? Huh, 89 the yeah, what is MDDL middle of the so maximum height 89 meters type of dam. So, 89 meters is, uh, so I think there is a mistake here. So, this is I think this 120 meter MD maximum height of dam is the you know the the height of the dam from the bottom most point which is about 19 meters. So, there is a mistake here, mistake here. type of dam earthen this is the height of the dam. So, I think the earthen dam then length of the waste sphere is 44 meters. Uh, maximum flood discharge location, right. So, we understand everything over here, correct. So, the salient features of this particular structure is clear. Any question, right. So, it has all the basic data about, about that, about that structure, <coughs> right. So, now if you look at the canal 3, three kilometers, canal capacity is given. So, uh, then area under command uh, acres. So, you can do this calculation, you will see that it is roughly you know 5, uh, 50 centimeter or 500 mm per acre and then you can see villages benefited, cost of the project and so on. Okay, so, here for example, you will see area under command 196 hectares and so on. So, this tells you what are the design attributes of that reservoir, what was it designed for, correct. Then the second sheet, I think we have seen this also. The second sheet tells us how it was actually utilized, right? So this is a yearly table which is created, you know, uh, which is created by the irrigation department, tells you how it is used. So here, for example, if you look at you know, Musai, so it will say design storage in million cubic meter 3.8, gross 3.6, live is roughly the same, maximum storage observed. So which is this year, 2010-11. So, this is typically available with the irrigation department office, <coughs> okay. Then we have protected water use in, so this is the reservation, right. So, reservation is for rugby 3.64 and nothing else, correct. So, 3.64 is the storage three and the reservation is for, for rugby 3.64. <coughs> water drawn at canal head for irrigation, so for Kharif 0, for rugby only 1.2, 1.29. So, so, this was the utilization, correct. So, 3.64 was available and 1.29 was utilized, 3.64 was booked for Rabi as well. So, now uh, lift from, so we have how, many, how much is the lift? So, 0.515 evaporation losses, 
and 0.625 leakage okay so there is a huge amount of leakage right so 1.29 plus all of this so net 4d plus 567 so this 4d plus 5 so 2.430 correct is that clear so the yearly utilization the water balance is given here so we will go, go down where where is that water drawn and canal head this one huh, so this is at the so this is so what happens is that there is the reservoir and there is a canal the beginning of the canal is called the canal head so the water discharged at the canal head may be much more than what is available at the canal tail correct so as the water flows there is actually a loss you know water will be used by farms will go into the ground and so on right so so at the so this is what this is the water balance at the reservoir level correct so the reservoir what is it booked for how is it utilized <coughs> correct so actual area irrigated so you will see that uh, kharif area was 0 where are we musai so area rabi area was 65 irrigation system performance hectare per meter cube so 50 50 hectare per where is this this is hectare per meter cube so uh, million meter cube so this this comes to about how much is how much would be 50 hectares is how much so million cubic meter mcm so it comes to much larger than so uh, there will be some efficiency uh, non irrigation use so anyway this tells you how much was how much was you what is the efficiency so you can give you oh sorry and then finally non irrigation use of 0.14 and live storage at the end was 1.07 so complete water balance and water use efficiency fine so uh, so if you look at our dimbe area remember our big map and all those villages so this tells you so for example if you look at this 1. Point live storage at the end of is 1.07 1.07 what is this in million cubic meter right 1.07 where is it the where are the units mc million cubic meter right so 1.07 million cubic meter so if you know so you know how much would you for example if i look at domestic use water we are budgeting at 200 LPCD, right? 200 LPCD is point, uh, point 0.2 into 365 is how much? 0.2 into 365, 70, right? So 70 cubic meters is the annual water requirement, domestic use water requirement. And 1.07 into 10 to 6 by 70, kitna aata hai? 1, 1 in uh, 10 to 6 by 70. Fifteen thousand, right? So there is enough water left for fifteen thousand people, right? So in this reservoir, so this is how I would design a water supply system, right? I think Om Damani will be teaching you that part in the next three in next week. So to design a water supply system, you have to first find a surface water source. So now, if I look at this data, I know that there is so many cubic meters available of you know, of surface water, <coughs> right? So of course, what will it will depend on is this Musai reservoir at what height is it? Right? If it is low down, you know, or if it is high up, I would prefer the one which is higher up so that my pumping costs are reduced and then the water actually flows to all the villages by gravity. <coughs> right? So that we will cover next week. <coughs> okay, good. So any questions? Any questions about this? So they, so one, this is the planning phase this is the planning phase so all of these are the planning data so these are called salient features so these are at the dpr level so if you look at the detailed project report it will contain this and it will contain a lot of other maps it will contain maps that you know which is the command area which is the rabbi command which is the kharif command and so on right so the dpr will give you a complete water balance you know and the you know the the, the probability of the reservoir being full all of this is the design part and this is the operational part so this is for 2010 11 okay so this was the utilization of the dams in tmid kalwa thane name of the circle tic thane 
तो थाने इरिगेशन सर्कल का व्हाट वाज द यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ द रिजर्वायर्स इन थाने सर्कल सो फॉर दैट पर्टिकुलर ईयर करेक्ट सो यू नो आई मीन व्हाट यू वुड डू इज कंपेयर द डीपीआर व्हाट वाज इट प्लान फॉर विद द यूटिलाइजेशन करेक्ट सो एट दैट लेवल यू विल अंडरस्टैंड how was the how is the what was it planned what was the water use planned for and what is it be so here is where you know for example in maharashtra you know there is always a war between agriculture water industry water and drinking water or domestic use water so what are the priorities so for example whether industry is first or drinking water is first and so on so it keeps changing in fact it change not for many states but maharashtra it actually for some years for some decade it industry was first and then agriculture and then drinking but now drinking is on the top and then agriculture and then industrial what are you okay any other question so you should you know probably stay so at the end of if you see here live storage you know so this is adivli dolkham zambe kharde and so on so you'll see a fair amount of water is actually is available in thane area and there is a lot of tanker fed villages here so this is the uh, <coughs> this this is the problem that we have uh, not doing the design very well <coughs> okay any question yeah okay hmm correct in fact the dead storage is being used in jayakwadi for example it is a dead storage which is being used for all drinking water schemes yeah so the worst case is already here so what the worst case so what is being done is that the dead storage will all obviously be in the middle of the reservoir right correct because it be at the deepest point so so there is a you know there is a jack well which is built over there and there is a you know we have seen that you know there is a passage which goes there and so on So in the middle of the reservoir, there will be a structure which will extract the dead storage. <coughs> so in fact, it is a dead storage at at Jayakwadi, which is really huge, and which has been used to, you know, supply drinking water to much of that area. No, no, because it it is flushing itself. No? So in fact, no, but the dead storage is maybe ten percent, right? So imagine take a take a take a bhand take a glass then you know keep 10% fill 90 fill fill it up then empty it you know keep 10% again fill it up and so on so as long as there is some churn say more than 60% of it is being recycled it will not it it will of course it is at the end it is at the bottom end but that does not change so there are actually many studies if you see a lot of the garbage or sewage from nasik and all of those areas actually goes into jaikwadi right so uh, an important question is the water quality in these reservoirs so in fact these the quality of water in these reservoirs is measured regularly but what happens is that these are all wide, you know spread wide and there is a natural cleaning action or oxidization matlab oxidation of the of all the material in the is actually happening at a fairly rapid rate so so the 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 water which comes into the into the reservoir is of much poorer quality typically than the water in the reservoir itself and that's because of the the solar you know the basically what is if you have garbage the best the only way we know of getting rid of garbage is by burning it and the sun actually is a slow burning oxidation process so it is you know just removing that part <coughs> but it is for example in jayakwadi or most of these reservoirs the And the the chemical analysis or the water quality is also measured very regularly you see we so I, we let us go back to our development idea right so if we want secure lives for ourselves we need to survive so if you are willing to you know if if you are willing to live more of the land and say you know go send our women out longer distances to fetch drinking water if you are happy with that we don't need to survive right so so the point is that that there can be reservoirs without environmental cost is a myth there cannot be so there is a direct competition between our lives and other people's lives you know so the 
as you know many authors say it is the Anthropocene era, right. The Anthropocene era is the, the centrality of human beings, right. So, if we want to be the central you know objects or you know in this on earth then right. So, I think that a lot of environmental lobbying or environmental activism does not realize that you know that there is an inherent problem with the with our Anthropocene era. Right. In fact, you perhaps you should also read this other book. I forget the author. It's called the uh, Sapient Man, or it's an Israeli, huh? Huh? Sapient? Who? It's an Israeli. Harari. What's it? Harari. 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 No. The Sapient Man. So he actually raises the point that that we are perhaps over sapient. So we enjoy doing our Sudoku and we. You know, imagine doing a Sudoku. I mean, I have never seen a deer or a wild boar do Sudoku, correct? So that, and we worship it. We like the ability to sit back and do a Sudoku, or you know, if, right? Or just, you know, just to enjoy, you know, each other's talk, apple songs, and so on, just to titillate our whatever, so-called brains, right? So maybe we are just over sapient. Maybe that. And therefore, we get bored. Now, a lot of you know young young people are leaving the villages in droves because life there is too boring. Correct. So once life in villages becomes boring, then cities have to be managed. Water has to be fetched from somewhere, right? So, for example, forget about these reservoirs. Forget about agriculture. You know, drinking water, urban drinking water, is the biggest environmental stress. To fetch, you know, just imagine tomatoes have to come from there be eaten here then our shit has to go somewhere, water has to be brought from and so on, <coughs> right. So, if you look at you know how improbable this way of consumption is, right or we want orange juice every day or capsicum on our pizzas every day, correct. You know forget about monsoon growing cycle and when does it rain and so on, we want it and we are willing to pay, right. So, who is doing the paying? Of course, the environment is doing the paying. Not the environment, but other organisms on this earth are actually doing the paying, right? So you you should so consider this. So of course I am of course a, a pro pro nature and so on, but but we have to make a choice, right? So I hope that you people make the wise choice. So I think one one answer to it is start doing bird watching. Okay, start observing birds on campus, right, I mean the feathered kind, right. <laughs> so, so, what I mean is, so if you do the, that kind of, uh, so you will actually understand how the environment is changing. So, for example, I remember when I was a UG student here, you know the, the shrike, the, the shrike is a bird, you know it comes in November around this time just after the monsoon, you know it, it was a very exciting time, you know the just. So, for a few weeks it was not there and suddenly one day you will start seeing it then it is everywhere, right. So, the shrike then the there are many uh, such uh, birds which are orioles and they are migratory bird, uh, oriole is not, but shrike is. So, it is very interesting to observe them and then maybe life may not be that boring and maybe then you do not mind fetching water you know from 200 meters away <coughs> maybe, okay. So, any other questions? So, yes, so I hope you know I mean I hope that <laughs> there is a of course a yeah, but uh, there is a damage but we have to we have to decide where, what we want to do. Yes, so of course by the way uh, there are some nice pictures floating around. So, the US it seems uh, passed the clean air and clean water act you know uh, I think about 30 years ago 1970 or 60 and then there are some pictures of that time and pictures of now of the same areas and there is a dramatic difference, okay. But all the same you will see that in 1970 to 2000 a lot of manufacturing actually moved out of the US, right. So, and it has become a net importer of goods and exporter of garbage, correct. So, it is not uh, and of course Apple. So, uh, so you have to you know you have, so it is not that they have managed to uh, get rid of environmental whatever, it is just, it just exported the environmental destruction which is happening, right. So, so that uh, issue is also there. 
yeah so uh, we should by the way in the indian express you see that there are those goa me coal you know coal is being imported how do you how what goan people don't want it passing through their you know through their state right so now maybe we should stop trains going into goa because we don't want all those you know uh, vacation the, the people going on vacation to goa they are passing through my malwad i don't want them to go through my malwad so where will it stop no? so there has to be some understanding that you know there's nimbi not in my backyard has some limitation right so you cannot or maybe i will say that i live in santa cruz and planes going to goa you know for taking vacation is actually just irritates me or causes me a headache right maybe so uh, anyway so yesterday there was a note from uh, the collector of palghar he's called a meeting on tuesday so if you want to go if you're free on that day you should go he's called a meeting uh, calling us and we had designed a scheme for uh, mukhada water supply scheme for the whole of mukhada right for because it's repeated tanker fed area so repeated village matlab villages repeatedly tanker fed so we had designed a, a, <coughs> a surface water based scheme for mukhada which was based on upper vaitana right so upper vaitana is the the reservoir which supplies water to mumbai so we did the whole calculation how much is the you know exactly this data <coughs> so what did we use we use this data for upper vaitrana what are the chances of you know how much is the withdrawal how much is the dead storage you know how much can we utilize and so on and based on upper vaitrana in fact what was it has a nice history maybe i should tell you that there was a water supply scheme in mukhada some one third of mukhada based on lower vaitrana right so which is down and that scheme got uh, got Uh, demolished because you know bmc increased the height of lower vaitana so in fact the scheme got the water supply scheme the jack parrot say got immersed so if you go to mukhada area you know if you go from uh, from um, from kasara into khodala and you will cross that new reservoir so that got annihilated so then uh, the government approved a scheme for the for the, the same one third a new scheme so what we did what we intervened was we don't want it from lower vaitana but we want it from upper vaitana right because it's much higher after all water from upper vaitana comes into lower vaitana and comes to bombay so how does it matter whether we take it from lower vaitana or upper vaitana doesn't matter so we took the water from upper vaitana and designed a water supply scheme for the the, the whole taluka and that design we gave it to the local mla and the collector and then and the water supply department the water supply department has now the collector has called a meeting you know you know given that the governor of the state has ordered the collector to call a meeting and make a have a hearing of all parties so the water supply department will be there collector will be there then some citizens will be there and the water supply department so all four or five agencies will be there right and then we will try to thrash out so they keep the water supply say it is not feasible so we matlab the iit design is wrong so what we have to say is okay then either bab dikhane to shraddha kar so show us where it is wrong right you have to show either you so this is a complete design based on your norms of construction so now you have to say what exactly is wrong or you have to construct the scheme right so if if it fits all the tribal norms or the tribe allocation financial norms everything so we have to see on tuesday what you know what hair do they pull out rabbit do they pull out of the topi right so we will see on tuesday what happens so anyway i think let's stop <coughs>